With accusations of hacking and aimbots in abundance, this TF2 class can bring out hysteria in anyone, both intentionally and unintentionally. The sniper is a simple man that spent most of his life in the driest parts of Australia, this being reflected through his calm and collected attitude, thick accent, and snarky bogan dialect. The open plains of the outback have shaped him into a mercenary of precision, most effective when he keeps his distance from a fight. It's challenging work, but with enough accuracy and patience and some extra tricks up the leg of his pants, he can make short work of any enemy. Even the heavy, who is a serious threat to practically every other class. This unrivaled domination of the battlefield has some tormented souls crying out for his destruction, claiming this crazed gunman has too much power for his own good. And since this is an episode of What If X Was An X, you know we've got a creative way of answering their prayers. You probably already know how things are about to unfold for our sniping friend over here, but if you're new to this series, I'll bring you up to speed. I pick one of the nine classes from Team Fortress 2, take away what defines their gameplay, repurpose a weapon from another class to replace it, and watch my creation kick ass or get their ass handed to them. We've seen the Heavy lose his precious Sasha and struggle to fend for himself without her, and we've witnessed the Pyro become even more dangerous while sane. Now we're about to watch Sniper go through the same process. Will he remain a serious threat despite the changes, or will he fall to the bottom of the the rankings even beneath the light heavy. It's time for us to find out as we begin this ritual by isolating what makes the sniper, you know, a sniper. Let's get one thing straight. This class is the literal definition of a glass cannon. Sniper's base health of 125 makes him one of the weakest classes in TF2. This same health value being shared with three others, the scout, engineer, and spy. Though when it comes to how fast he runs, he's stuck at the average speed of 300 hammer units per second, which scout and even spy leave him in the dust at. However, these disadvantages are more than made up for by Sniper's true skill. He is the lone class that has the ability to eliminate his targets instantly from any distance, so long as he could get a shot lined up on their head. Even if he misses their heads, he can still deal serious damage with a fully charged body shot. Most of the time, charging a shot requires the Sniper to scope in, which drastically reduces his speed, but gives him a better view and higher chance of hitting his target. All of Sniper's primary weapons are capable of charging, though the Sydney Sleeper can't get headshots, so we don't talk about it. They are split into two types, Sniper Rifles and Bows, all of which take one and a half seconds or more to reload. His secondaries come in all shapes and sizes. Some machine guns for chip damage, backpacks that provide simple buffs, and throwable buffs that are the reason I made that pants joke in the intro. And then we get to Sniper's melees, which don't have much variety at all, but that's because they don't need it. As a fighter on the back bench, it isn't often he has to use these, so them behaving mostly the same is totally acceptable. And thus we have the five characteristics of the Sniper that we need to choose from. Headshots, scoping, and his three weapon slots. Now unlike the previous two videos in the series, we're not going to beat around the bush. Since headshots and scoping are synonymous with the majority of Sniper's primary weapons, and the three could essentially be grouped into a single defining feature, they are going to be what we focus on today. His other weapon slots don't hold a candle to how iconic his sniper rifles are, so we can drop them, and there isn't really anything about his health or speed for them to warrant being characteristics in their own right. Yeah, that was much quicker than the previous processes of elimination we usually go through. Looks like it's time for me to reveal the replacement weapons, so let's get on with that right now. There's one particular weapon I can think of that gets close enough to what the sniper rifles accomplish, having increased damage on hit and punishing inaccuracy, a trade-off that all of Sniper's primaries have. And so, you might be surprised to find out that this weapon seemingly built for sniping is in fact the direct hit, and it gives me the perfect excuse to make the Sniper shoot rockets. Unlike the not heavy shotgun and the anti-flame gun, it was very hard to come up with the stats for a unique rocket shooting sniper rifle. After some experimentation, I ended up with the following lackluster stats. Its projectile speed increase is the same as the direct hits, but its damage is doubled, simulating fully charged body shots. Likewise, it roughly shares the direct hit smaller explosion radius. However, as with other sniper rifles, it can only load one rocket at a time and takes just as long to load them as a rifle, making it slower than a traditional rocket launcher. Now that the replacement's taken care of, what other weapons are the best to use alongside it? In my opinion, the secondary weapon to use is the Girardi for increased damage. As while the cozy camper provides extra survivability, it's simply not enough to keep the sniper alive while he's in a firefight. And while no melee can save us in the long run, the tribalman Shiv at least makes sure our enemies don't come out of a confrontation alive, but you should be able to use whatever melee you prefer. Now that we have our loadout programmed into Custom Weapons X and a rough idea of how
how to use it, let's skip the formalities and jump in game to find out just how good it is. After how much I've used this weapon during my Twitch streams, I can confidently say this. For me at least, the Rocket Sniper is genuinely terrible. There's no way I could sugarcoat the agony I went through to test this complete and utter bastardization of a class. I'm already bad enough as a regular sniper, but this threw my existing skills out the window, as not even if you have good aim are you able to benefit your team. Even if I had given this replacement weapon better stats, it wouldn't have solved its core issue. It combines the precision of a sniper rifle with the prediction required of soldiers launches, and these two aspects do not work together at all. Dealing damage with these slow moving rockets is a purely luck based affair, and people dare to call the Huntsman the Luxman. Damn it, I'm missing the, I'm missing the medic as well! Ah! Obviously, with a weapon like this, you need to try and catch your enemies in places where they're unlikely to miss your shots, such as those running in a straight line or traveling through small corridors like their spawn doors. But you don't get shots like that all the time, so the next best thing you can do is fire onto a control point or the payload cart and get kills that way. That's provided you're able to keep yourself alive in the first place. In my pursuit of killing people, I quite often manage to kill myself first, either by shooting walls next to me or being too close to my enemy. The former method of suicide is dependent on your view model's position. Because I'm right-handed, I would often die when trying to look around right turns as opposed to left ones. The latter method, however, you can't do much about, and that's simply due to the fact that you need to be close to your targets to be at all effective. This weapon suffers from damage fall-off just like other rocket launchers, which makes it so much worse than any of Sniper's standard primaries, only able to deal the equivalent of a body shot at close to medium range. Not to mention that it's just as slow as a rifle to shoot, you don't have the same luxury of shooting at feet as the soldier does, and if your target makes the tiniest sidestep, you'll have squandered a hundred or so damage points. You simply can't face your enemies head on, and that means you'll need to seize every opportunity where you can get out of their line of fire, such as flank routes, hide advantages, and hiding places. Even with all of these problems, I was at least hoping that Sniper having a rocket launcher would improve his mobility and let him get the upper hand in that respect, but that is not the case either. A single rocket jump takes away nearly half your health, making every single jump over committal. This forces you to stick with the camping playstyle, and yes, you're still prone to getting distracted and flanked from the side or behind by a power class or a spy. Essentially, I tried changing Sniper's job, but I only ended up making his current one more unbearable. So as you've clearly picked up from my traumatic experiences with this loadout, the Rocket Sniper suffers in one-on-one -on -one encounters most of the time, more so than a normal Sniper. But this class was always about picking off targets from a distance to directly support the team. So just how beneficial to others is the Sniper with these changes? First of all, you've got to use your Girati if you want to be at all useful, since your primary is horrible on its own and your SMGs don't have nearly enough power. <laughs> Okay. Someone in my stream chat said that this loadout was basically a worse version of a buff banner soldier, and I couldn't agree with them more. Provided you throw your Girati first and then start shooting, you'll have a better chance of getting a kill. And even if you don't, your team will more easily be able to help you. But since you're barely able to kill enemies when left to your own devices, you'll probably be more of a hindrance than a help to your team. I feel really bad about dragging the rocket sniper through the dirt, but this isn't the end. But we still have to see how he stacks up when pitted against each of the standard classes. That's right, it's time for the matchups. <laughs> Scout may be one of the easiest classes to eliminate in general, only requiring one rocket to kill, but his high speed and double jump make that hit much harder to get. If he has the upper hand through flanking or dodging, his scattergun will no doubt make short work of you. Soldier is basically a better you, with the ability to shoot more frequently and having a greater blast radius. Even his shotgun is a serious threat. The best you can hope for is that you'll be able to air strafe off of his rockets to surprise him from above. The pyro won't be that big of a problem to deal with, unless they're at close range, and not even because of their fire. Their air blast is the real killer versus you, for since you're just as weak as the scout, one hit from your own rocket launcher will surely cause your demise. A demo man is slightly less of an issue than a soldier, but there's one time where they shine over soldiers, and that is while you're higher up. The trajectory of their grenades lets them reach you much easier than any other class, so you're pretty much required to approach them from a different angle. Heavy simply has too much health to be taken out if there's nowhere to hide. To have any chance of killing someone as resilient as him, you'll need to frequently dip in and out of cover, which is thankfully something the heavy isn't capable of himself. Engineer are just as fragile as scouts, but their buildings prove to be quite the distraction. It's easy to target them, and many sentries won't even survive a single rocket, though if the engineer is around to repair their stronger buildings, you won't have any luck due to your slow reload speed. While a lone medic is mostly easy to deal with, as soon as they partner up with a healing target, there's practically nothing you can do. You'll have to pray that you can get behind the pair and quickly kill the medic before they use their charge, which they've probably already gotten by then. Normal and huntsman snipers are now the bane of your existence, as they can still do their job. There is 
isn't much you can do against them. Either you accept your fate or close the distance and end up killing them and yourself. Lastly, when it comes to facing a spy, while they're just as easy to kill as a scout or an engineer, that's only when they're out in the open. Their ability to disguise and cloak greatly reduces these opportunities. And if they're using the ambassador, you can say goodbye to that head of yours. Wow, this is unquestionably the worst loadout I've tried in this series so far. While not completely unusable, it struggles in areas it's supposed to shine and could be so much better at the potential cost of making the sniper a sniper again, which you all know we can't do. I have to put the rocket sniper in last place on the rankings, and so far this continues the trend of me experiencing emotional lows and highs in succession, for this experiment happened after the minigun pyro, and that pyro was so good I had to nerf their damage. I will not be coming back to this sniper, even if the rocket launcher is buffed, for I know I won't have any better luck once my aim starts to become important again. And that's that! Thank you so much for watching this disaster of a video all the way through. A quick update on the state of this series though. With the shutdown of the 5th planet servers, I no longer have the means of getting these replacement weapons into the game and filming them for your sadistic pleasure. Until I find another way of adding weapons to the game, I'm going to be putting What If X Wasn't X on hold. But I've got lots more content headed your way, so stick around for that. On that note, like the video if you enjoyed the torture, don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe to this channel for future videos, and as always, I will see you all next time. This video is dedicated to Jerelex to non-actual name, and Alexa and Snartle for funding this channel. And no, none of you are responsible for me going through all that, I'm just a masochist.